Alrighty, well, good morning, everybody, and once again, it's cast time. So, um, and I'll go ahead and preface this by saying, um, I've got a fair amount to talk about, and, um, this is going to be a fairly involving cast, and parts of this might get a little glitchy. Um, if I can remember to, I might do a, do a behind-the-scenes portion. Yeah, I might do a behind-the-scenes behind portion of this. It'll be, it'll, but, uh, if I do, it'll look like this, but it's usually something I'll talk about, like, outside of the cast I made, I'm just talking about how I made it, but I haven't done one of these in a very long time, so, yeah, so, mistake number one, so, but like, like I said, it, it's, I got a fair, got, I've got a fair bit to say, um, and this is, this might potentially be a messy cast, so, again, don't be surprised if I make a few mistakes here and there. And some of which might actually be beyond my control, but before I do, let me... Uh... Yeah, I'll do it. I gotta... I gotta, I gotta clear out a few windows here. Okay, that should do it. So, But anyway, let me go ahead and intro this real quick. Um, This is... Cult, Mechanicus, Drone, Litany, and Forge Cathedral Ambient. <laughs> One hour of om Omniscia worship and RPG music. This was the dark gothic chant, chant that I actually wanted, I was thinking about playing yesterday, but I changed my mind at the last second. So I figured, eh, might as well just go ahead and play it today. So let me go ahead and rewind it back. Okay, so, so to start with, um, my daily pinball session, it went horseshit. Just absolute horseshit. It just, this was, um, this was definitely one of those sessions where I just couldn't do anything. I couldn't get anything going. FX3, um, tournaments, um, I definitely didn't win any of them, um, there might have been one or two where I'm I probably ranked pretty high, but for the most part, I was uh, either average or below average. I think there is. Whoa, 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 whoa. I gotta turn my AC off, otherwise uh, the noise it makes gets too distracting. But anyway, like I was saying, it it was just one of those sessions where it was just. I couldn't get anything going. Um, FX3 tournaments, it... Like I said, I was probably average at best. And I think there was like a... Maybe a tournament or two. Where I was like absolute dead last. Um, pinball Arcade. It was, it was even worse. It just... Same thing. Couldn't get anything going. Just... I think... Um, some of those tables are probably ending as quickly as they began. And because of that, I just went ahead and said, fuck it. Went over to Zachariah. Where, um, where the tables there, they're so... They're so difficult and convoluted that you're lucky to last maybe a minute on those things. Well, as has been going on, usually, um, in situations like this, I actually do better on Zachariah than I do on the, uh, on Pinball Arcade. Well, this time around... Not so much. Um, I mean, I, I had a better time on Zachariah to be sure, but it wasn't by much. So, so yeah, this was definitely one of those days where I just shouldn't have bothered. And um, I do need to add one more thing. Totally and completely forgot to do this. I forgot to add this in earlier. Almost done. 
complicated. And then to, to further compound this problem, uh, I, yeah, I had more people check out my channel than, than I, I, I can recall. I mean, yeah, I had a lot of people, I had a lot of people checking my stream out. So, I actually felt pretty damn bad, too. I bet there was a whole lot of disappointment, because like I said, this, this was one of the worst sessions I've had in a while. So I got a feeling that's going to be a whole bunch of people that ain't coming back again. Just, oh my god, this guy's horrible. Oh. You know, so... Mucho disappointment. I mean, sorry guys. You know, that's, that's pretty much all I can say. Sorry. Um, if anything, you guys should have come... You, should, you guys should have come by my stream yesterday when I was really kicking ass and taking names. So... That's the nature of the beast. And I think I might need to turn this down a bit. Yeah. So. But. All I can hope for. Is that it'll be a better session tomorrow. So. But. I guess. Uh, I guess uh, one other good thing that happened today. Um, okay, so, and even, even, even with me turning it down a little bit, it's still kind of loud in my headphones. It, I'm thinking it just must be the way, it must be the music itself. Just, just that, bong, bong, bong. I mean, it's just ringing loudly in my ears. I've had a, uh, I've had music that does this. Like, uh, despite the fact that it actually, you know, by uh, by all accounts, it actually appears to be pretty loud. It's like I can hardly hear it. Then I got moments like this where. Volume wise, it's about average, but it's it's just again bong bong bong. So I'm just gonna take them off. But again, like uh, getting back to what I was trying to talk about, um, I guess one good thing that uh, happened after the happened happened that happened after the stream, um, there is a uh, on my YouTube recommendations there. There came up a uh, new movie I started watching. Or I would say mo new. It came out in like 2013, 2014 called Dear Mr. Watterson. Um, it's just a documentary about the uh, creator of Calvin and Hobbes, um, Bill Watterson. But um, I'm, I'm probably about 45 minutes in. And for the most part, he, it was just a bunch of people kissing his ass. See, it just... You know, yeah, I mean, um, I mean, on one end, yeah, I, I totally get it. He, the guy, I mean, the guy's a fucking legend. I mean, he's, he's launched the careers of a lot of comic strippers. You know, a lot, you know, huge, in, you know, huge inspiration for a lot of people. The same way that Broly Legs was the inspiration for me getting back into fighting games. So, but I, you know, on the other hand, though, when when, when the majority of the documentary is just all these, uh, all these, some of them were comic strip artists themselves, and some of them were just, I guess, just random Joe Schmoes that you know, the, the when they were putting together the documentary, they just found these people on the street. I'm, I'm assuming that's how he, how he did it. Just went on the street and asked them, "Hey, man, do you like Calvin and Hobbes?" Well, man, yeah, I love Calvin and Hobbes. Would you like to be part of a documentary? Sure, man. Fuck yeah, I love that guy. And then, and then you know, then he interviews him. I think that's how he did, how he did a lot of these. Cause a lot of the people that were being interviewed, it just I've never seen him before. And, you know, usually whatever on these documentaries, whenever it's a person of importance, it'll like show the name of the person and like what comic strip or what what show they did, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They weren't showing any of these for these people, so that's what I'm thinking. They're just 
people who work in a steel mill that that got uh, got lured by this guy and you know giving an interview. So, um, but so, but anyway, um, like I said, lot lots of butt kissing on this one. But on one end, I get it. But on the other hand, too, it's like it's. I want to say laying it on too thick. You know, there wasn't, there was like very little in the way of like actual documentation. Like, you know, Bill was born in 1945 in such and such place, Ohio, or, you know, or whatever, you know, stuff like that. It was just, it just, you know, a bunch of people saying nice things about him. Uh, but I guess, but uh, I guess uh, to, aside from that, um, as far as what I think of him, um, I like him. Um, in fact, I have his, uh, I think I spent $150, $200 on his, uh, his big three-volume set on all the comic strips he's done. So, I mean, I got that, read through a lot of it. Um, but like I said, I like it. I like reading it. Um, I haven't read it, any of his stuff in a very, very long time, but, you know, it's good stuff. Um, but aside from that, but not, it's not like, total absolute reverence or anything like that it's just I mean it, it, he, to me he just or how can I explain this well I like him like I like peanuts you know I mean I like a lot of comic strips for different reasons I mean you know I like Calvin and Hobbes I like peanuts I like the far side I like life as hell um, I like the boondocks I like Bloom County. I like Bizarro. I like Crankshaft. I like Zitz. Um, I like Red Meat. Um, I like Zippy the Pinhead, but probably like a lot of other people, only in like small doses. So, but, but I mean, I love me some Zippy. Um, and I also like, you know, um, National Lampoon's totally tasteless cartoons uh, when my parents aren't looking. So, but yeah, I'll. I think mean, comic comic strips are, or I'm speaking of back in the day. These days, memes are my comic strips. That it, but I'm you know, just, all I'm wired, I guess. Call it a quirk, but, but anyway, um. But back when I back when I read them heavily, comic strips were like were like jazz music, you know, my favorite genre of music. It, overall, it doesn't really matter what you put on the turntable or what you what you uh, play on Spotify or whatever. If it's jazzy, close enough. Um, if you but um, if you were to play Miles Davis's kind of blue album, yeah, I'm gonna know recognize that one, but. If you were to play Miles Davis's Sorcerer album or ESP album, I would never have recognized it. So, but like I said, it's it's all good. And same with you know, same with comic strips. They're I like them all for different reasons. So, but one other thing, it did it. One other thing that really kind of ticked me off about this documentary, but. Oh, here, I'm going to stop a second. I'm going to take a drink of some Arizona green tea. Oh. But, uh, again, I'm, I'm only, I'm only about 45 minutes into this documentary. I think it's like hour and a half, so basically I'm halfway through it. Is, um, what they, what they don't mention is the fact that, um, Unlike the vast majority of uh, cartoonists out there, he never sold out. He never, never allowed his creation to be merchandise, you know, into stuffed animals, calendars, pens, pencils, coffee mugs, um, bumper stickers, you know, so on and so forth. Um, I believe he was the only, if not one of very few cartoonists that refused that refused to that refused to sell out you know that refused to allow his work to be merchandised you know 
which is more than I could say about a lot of other people, a lot of other cartoonists out there, and a lot of YouTubers as well. I mean, I can only I can only think of maybe a small handful of YouTubers that um that refuse to allow or oh, how can I put this that uh, refuse to allow allow their um allow their content to be monetized. Um, I think Nero was one. He does um. I think he makes a. He's a graphics artist. He makes textures and stuff. Um, he also does a fair amount of video game and movie reviews, but he's one that refuses. He refuses to allow his work to be monetized. Um, Prometheus Studios. I think he was. They were another one. Um, in fact, you're listening to. It's the music you're listening to now. It came from Prometheus Studios. But these were um. These are two that I can think of that they wouldn't allow their work to be monetized. You know, and I think um, Prometheus said the same thing at um. I don't remember where I saw it, but they they strove to make sure that their content was ad free. Most of the time anyway. You know, so it was, you know, again. Hang on, I I I kinda lost my train of thought. But yeah, they're they wanted their videos to be ad free. For the same reason that I wanted, um, I want my video, why all my, all my works are Creative Commons works. I don't want them, um, I don't want my stuff copyrighted. I don't want them putting ads on my videos, because it just ruins the experience. And uh, Prometheus Studios said the same thing. You know, you're, you know, you're getting, you know, you're getting into this, you know, getting into this cool gothic music. You know, you're getting into this cool music, and then all of a sudden. <laughs> Now in concert, Billy Bob Jones and the Blowjobbers, live in Oregon. Boots, 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 boots. You know, I mean, you know, you know, that just kills the immersion. So, so in fact, you know, in fact, uh, probably, probably my favorite Calvin and Hobbes book that has nothing to do with the uh, comic strips themselves. I mean, I've already gave my opinion on that here a few minutes ago. Was um was the uh, the intro that he gave? He was talking about the same thing. He does he he uh, he actually gave a whole bunch of reasons why he refused to allow his allow his creations to be merchandised, and all of them for damn good reasons. But it wasn't that it wasn't that he didn't need the money, which is I'm pretty sure it's true for a lot of YouTubers out there, a lot of content creators that um. Uh, that you know that want sponsorships you know it isn't it's more because you know for them it's more because they don't want to go out and get the kind of job that I got overnights at Walmart you know you know, you know that kind of thing I mean it but he he uh, but um Bill Watterson said the same thing about not not want his work to be merchandised because then but like I said, he gave a he gave a whole host of reasons why, but all of them made total sense, and a lot of it I agree with. So, hang on, I'll, I'll I was I'm trying to remember what I wanted to what I said a few moments ago. I forgot what I, I forgot how I wanted to finish that. So I'm I'm improvising all of this so. But I mean, it, I think, uh, but kind of in line with what uh, Watterson said, it wasn't that he didn't need the money. It's just the rest. It's just the the process and what you'd have, the hoops you'd have to jump through to get to it, to be able to, you know, get get that sponsorship money is bullshit. I said the same, you know, it's the same thing I was saying about all the YouTubers that have sponsorships. It's not, you know, it's it's not that. You know, hey, you want? I mean, if you want, if you want that extra money, go for it. I mean, hell, I mean, hell, I, I mean, I'd sure love to be sponsored if someone could afford a, you know, afford to pay me two grand a month. I mean, hell, I'll, I'll quit my job. You know, or at the very, very least, go on a leave of absence. Somebody want, you know, if you know, if a sponsor wanted to come up, 
you know, donate, say, probably two grand a month, I think that's probably uh, what I could live off of. Uh, my, you know, living wage. I mean, hell yeah. But the problem is, it's like you're making a deal with the devil. You know, because then it just, it also makes your videos look like complete ass. You know, because, I mean, that's that's pretty much what I'm stuck with these days. You know, go on a bit, you know, check out this person's video. But then I have to sit here and I have to skip through 60 to 90 seconds of that video because he's plugging his damn sponsor. You know, you, you, ideally you put that shit at the end of the video, not at the beginning. There was um, something else I was wanting to talk about on that too. I can't remember what. But yeah, I guess uh, probably the short answer on that though. Um, sponsorships to me is, is the devil's bargain that I want no part of. So and it, I think um so and I think um merchandising was the uh, was the devil's bargain that Bill Watterson wanted nothing to do with. But but I mean rewinding back even further it it's also one of my big gripes about this documentary. Now once again I've only watched uh I've only watched about half of this documentary, so they might actually talk about this in the second half. But like I, I don't know. The way the documentary is going now, I don't think they're talking about it at all. So, but, you know, but again, it was one of my cries. You know, no mention of his unwillingness to sell out has been mentioned so far. So. Um, but otherwise, I think that's going to do it for me, everybody. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and call it good here. I believe I've said all the things that I wanted to say. And, um, I think, no, actually, now that I think about it, there might have been, there might have been more things I wanted to say about this whole thing. But, uh, it just, I, I'd have to process it and all that. And it just, it would have just come out and just total blah, 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 just. Basically, me speaking gibberish, so. So, I'll just go ahead and call it good here. But, otherwise, hey, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. Always do. And I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow. So, but, until then, though, thanks again for coming by, everybody, and see you all next time. Take care.